Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today. This is the How 10 Minutes Can Change Your Life webinar with Keith Barker. Uh, very quickly before Keith begins his presentation, uh, we want to take this time to remind everyone that you can use the chat window at any time to ask any questions you might have during the presentation. And Keith's going to do his best at the end of the webinar to answer some of these questions. Also want to remind everyone that a recording of this webinar will be posted to our blog, blog.cbtnuggets, tomorrow. Uh, but that's all I've got. Keith, go ahead and take it away. Hey, thanks, Anthony. In the in the pre-show, where Ant and I were chatting, um, we have a huge passion we've discovered for what we do at CBT Nuggets, and a big part of that is in measurable terms changing lives. And what I'd like to do is chat with you for a moment. And I know all of our time is very valuable, so I we absolutely appreciate you spending this time with us in this webinar. Is what is 10 minutes of a of a day? You know, 600 seconds, 0.17 hours if you round it, and 0 0.0069. And any guesses on that dot 0 0.0069, what that's a portion of? That's the percentage of the day that 10 minutes is. And what I would like to do is chat with you about a, something that happened in my life that is relevant, I think, for all of us, and I think you can benefit from it as well. I got contacted through social media, I think it was like two and a half yeah, maybe two years ago, two and a half years ago, by somebody named Jason Shura. That's his real name. I worked with him back in the 90s at Paramount Pictures. In fact, if I get out my, uh, my tools here for a second, let me show you where my office was. This is the, uh, the B-Lot. Uh, they call it the, the B-Lot. It's actually a tank, so they use it for a parking structure here. But what happens is when they do a movie like Congo, or the net, and they do a scene there, like part of Waterworld was shot here. They fill this up with water, and there's the backdrop that they can paint any way they need to, and then they can film scenes across that. This is the Zucker building right here, and I, was, I had an office in that Zucker building, which was a lot of fun, a huge amount of fun. So, and so this is just a portion of the start of the uh, Paramount Picture Studio back uh, several years ago. And over here, they have the different uh, lots where they are the studios where they film Star Trek and other, other films. So um, what has this got to do with 10 minutes a day? Well, I got contacted by Jason a couple of years ago. I worked with him like almost <laughs> you know, back in the 90s. And he said, oh my gosh, Keith, you're doing so great. That's amazing. You've got a couple of CCAEs and you've got like 5 million views on YouTube and blah, blah, blah. He's going on. And uh, I said, Jason, it's good to talk to you. How can I help? He goes, oh, I'm studying for my CCNA and I really need to get it because I'm working towards this new job. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, 20 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, we were working together in the same environment, and there's such a huge gap between what I'm currently doing now and what he's just starting to study. I mean, I got my CCA back in 2001, and I've you know, got my second CCA in 2003, and I've learned you know, Juniper and other ver you know, VMware and other platforms since then. And I just... It just made me pause for a second, and I was very grateful that I had done some very small things in my life, but I did them consistently. And those very small things, which I'm going to encourage you to do, can get you to pretty much anywhere you want to go. Now, here's the challenge. Are you ready? The challenge is, where do you want to go? And that really ought to be the first thing that you and I talk about and decide before we start walking. For example, if we start climbing a ladder and we climb and climb and climb and climb and climb and climb every day, climb, 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 and we get to the top and the ladder's on the wrong stinking building, that was a huge waste of effort and energy. So I, I had the opportunity to uh, visit HQ, headquarters at CBT Nuggets, a few weeks ago and met with a lot of great people. And one of those people was Kevin. I'd never met Kevin before. He's part of the QA team. And, and Kevin told me about the five whys. I thought, what, what are the five whys? And it's a method that can be used to drill down to the root cause of a problem and solve it. And what we could do, you and I, we could use the five whys in our own life. For example, um, what do you want in life? Let's do this right now. I'd like you to just envision that you and I are sitting down together, and I'm asking you these questions, and I'd like you to respond you know, in, your, in your mind. You don't have to do it verbally. You may be in a room or what have you, so just respond in your mind. Question number one, what kind of job would you love to have? So think about that job. 
the perfect quote unquote job you'd like to have. And then my next question is why? Why would you like that job? And your reasons for that job could be varied. It could be um, because there's satisfaction in that job, or it's a job where your skills are respected and appreciated. It could be financially rewarding for you so you can take care of your family and loved ones and do things you'd want to do. Whatever the reason is, great. And as, a, as you think about why you would love that job and the benefits of it, I'd like to ask why is that important to you? Why is having the money, if that's what it is for you, or why is that thing that you're thinking about, the benefit of having that job, why is that so important to you? And the concept of five whys is getting all the way down to the core of why you tick. What is it about what it is you want to be and have that, that really drives you? So I've done this exercise. In fact, I did this exercise about 35 to 40 years ago <laughs> as a very young person. And I came out with a statement that I've never shared publicly. I'm going to share it now. Here's Keith Barker's mission statement for my life. The purpose of my life is to heal and inspire others with power through being an authentic, loving, creative person, creating a world of abundance and freedom, and so it is. That statement took me many, many months to come down to that core essence of what I want to be. And after I figured out what I want to be, everything else I do can fall into place and work towards that goal. So uh, trying to <laughs> I'm trying not to tear up on my mission statement. So now you know. So the fact of the matter is we need to start off with what we want to do, what we want to accomplish. And when I was very young, I set some goals. And one of the, I had a, a trainer, a coach, if you will. His name was Tom Hopkins. He was a sales trainer. And one of the things he said is you have to set a goal, set a 10-year goal. Visualize it. What do you want to have? Do you want to have a house? If so, what size of a house? Do you want to have a family, friends? Do you want to have things and objects? Do you want to have experiences? Do you want to travel? Do you want to have skills? Draw it all out. Write it out. And I did that. Uh, this is when I was just before I was married. I, I got married in 1985, and uh, I've been happily married for <laughs> There's a joke there. The joke is like this. I've been happily married for 20 years. The problem is I've been married for 28 years. <laughs> now, I've been happily married for the entire time, and we are having our 30th anniversary. It's 2015, our 30th anniversary this year in November. So anyway, part of my goals when I, before I got married was to identify a 10-year goal about the type of house, the type of career, the type of job, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I wrote that out. It wasn't just like wishful thinking. I wrote out that goal. Then the next step, is to take that goal, whatever it is you want, and break it down into a five-year set of goals. Okay, in order to get to the, the goal in 10 years, I need to break it down. And the reason this is important is because every journey starts with a single step. But the magic is, is that every journey is successfully completed or at least continued on by continuing to take those steps. So if we have a 10-year 10 10-year goal, we want to break that down into five-year chunks, and I'm not talking about thinking about it. I'm talking about writing this out on paper. And then you'd want to identify one-year goals that you'd have to reach to get to the five-year goals. And then you'd want to break that down. Do you see a trend here? It's like, oh, Keith, I, I get this, Keith. You're breaking it down so that our big term, what we really want out of our life goals, are being broken down into smaller chunks, and six-month goals would turn into one-month goals, and our one-month goals would turn into one-week goals, and then we'd have daily goals. So one of the daily goals that I would strongly encourage you to put on your list is to improve yourself. In fact, when I was at Paramount Pictures, I met so many great mentors, people that really assisted me in putting my head on straight and going the right direction or at least having a direction. And one of the objectives there um, in the daily goals was to prioritize our tasks and make sure that we're focusing on those things that are most important, the high, high level of long-term importance, and also fairly urgent things we'd also have to work on immediately. And so identify those daily goals and then get them done. So <laughs> I stole this from Nike. I guess there's, uh, uh, whether it's just do it or do it, that really is the, the key of accomplishing pretty much anything, is identifying the goal and starting moving our feet. So when I, when I got married back in 1985, I had nothing. I had a great wife, no doubt. And, but I had, as far as financially, 
I had a, Pont a Pontiac Catalina. I didn't have any technical skills. And it wasn't until I was married for a year and realized I may need to get some skills that I actually went to a technical college controlled data institute in Los Angeles area. And I got my first job at EDS out of that. And I just kept on going. And the secret is small, consistent steps in the direction where you want to go. Now, why is it? Why is it that you, my friend, don't do what you think or know would be beneficial for your own environment? And there's two big poles in the world, like it or leave it. There's two big poles that really exist. They are fear of lots of things or desire. You know, for example, I'm hungry. <laughs> I want to eat. There's a desire to get food somehow to go ahead and eat. Or if you're not eating, there might, it might turn into fear. Like, I'm afraid I'm going to die because I don't have enough food. I'm going to you know, die. Or I'm afraid I'm going to be embarrassed. Or I'm afraid of speaking in public. In fact, as people got, uh, there was a questionnaire done about people's fears. And did you know that more people are afraid of speaking in public than dying? So, you know, I guess the worst case scenario would be having to speak at your own funeral. <laughs> you know, both of them. Um, this gentleman, Spencer Johnson, wrote a book that I read a couple decades ago. It's called Who Moved My Cheese or Who Moved the Cheese? And there are several flavors of it. And it's basically talking about how, how things are today. For example, if, if the rat or the mouse goes through the, the trap or the, the maze and goes to a position and gets cheese and he runs that maze every day, all of a sudden the cheese is gone, what is the mouse going to do? The mouse could go to that same spot and complain that the cheese isn't there, or the mouse could change and take steps in measurable terms to go to find new cheese or to get new skills and improve. In the world of IT, information technology, the only constant, <laughs> besides IPv4 never going away, uh, but the only constant is things are changing all the time. Virtualization is happening. Data centers are being compressed into smaller spaces. Networking and switching and routing and VPNs are being virtualized as well. And as a person who grew up on physical switches, or you know, back in the 2000s, I worked with physical environments, I had two choices. One is to say, well, I hope the physical world stays for as long as I'm alive because that's all I know. Or I could start learning new skills like <laughs> VMware and vSphere and Citrix, which I have. And as a result of doing that and learning that, I'm keeping current with those technologies because the cheese, the prize does move. And we have to keep up with that. And a great way of doing that is making sure we have additional training coming in. A couple of aspects I'd like to share with you. I would have you write out what your goal is. I would go for the big term goal. Like what is the goal? What do you want from life? And write that out. And then have it somewhere where you can read it or rewrite it on a daily basis. That will help remind you of your overall goal, help you give you that motivation to get the job done. I would also recommend regarding training, if you, for example, nobody's born knowing VMware. Nobody's born knowing how to implement you know, load balancing on an F5 application delivery controller. <laughs> nobody's born knowing HTML and how to redirect traffic based on an individual code inside the HTTP header. It's all learned. And part of that and part of the learning is to set a schedule like every day. Um, I have changes that happen all the time in my life. I do. I've got kids that are growing and I've got different things happening at CBT Nuggets. And one way to adapt and to change that is simply to set, set a schedule. Say, for example, if I'm going to do, if I'm going to do study, let's focus on that for a moment. Let's block up a time where we'll do that 10 minutes of study. Now, I, I don't like exercising. Some people do. I don't. So if I just tell myself, you know what, I'm going to exercise for 10 minutes and I start, you know what happens? I don't, I, I usually will go longer than just 10 minutes because it's the well begun is half done attitude. So if you set a schedule and then you start going and start doing that studying at that period of time, once you're into it, if you've been to our videos with, you know, our trainers, including myself, we have a lot of fun. If you're having a little bit of interest, if you're able to, you know, talk with me in this nugget, in this webinar, and able to, you know, visualize the things I'm talking about, and you feel like, hey, this sounds like a pretty nice guy, this is how our nuggets are. 
So it's pretty darn easy just to plug in and actually get that knowledge transfer regarding the technologies that are going to make a huge difference in your life. Now, a couple things I would also encourage. I would encourage you to commit to, to others regarding some of your goals. Not all of your goals, but some of them. For example, if you have a spouse, you have a friend, you have a parent, you have somebody who cares about you, you could commit to them that, hey, I am committed to learning this technology or brushing up on this technology, and I'm committing to 10 minutes a day. And what I would like to do, and I've done this before, is you could write your friend a check. Now, <laughs> I just realized I don't even know where a check is in this house, but in the old days I would write a check. You could do a promissory note, I suppose. But what I would do is I would write a check for $100. And I would give it to the person I was going to commit to. And I said, I am committing to do X, Y, Z over the next three weeks. And if I do not do that, I want you to come to me in three weeks, the date on this check, and ask me, did you, you know, X, Y, Z, did you study these? And if I didn't, you can cash the check. You could do that same thing with cash. You could hand them some money, like a $20 bill or a $5 bill, and say, here, I'm going to give you this $5 bill sealed in this envelope. On the outside of the envelope, here's my commitment. And at the end of the week, if I haven't studied, let me know, and you can have that money. So whatever it is to help give a little bit more positive pressure on you studying to get what you want in your life, it's well worth it. I will also invite you to commit up at uh, a social media website. So if, like, if, you, if you send a Twitter message and say, I'm committing to doing X, Y, Z, hey, it's out there. And then that will help you, I think. If it helps me anyway. If I commit publicly, it helps me to actually – Make good on those promises. The other thing I would encourage you to do is when it comes to studying or learning or doing anything really that you, I don't know, what's more fun, house of cards or studying? I, you know, <laughs> it depends on if you like house of cards or not, I suppose. But you'd also want to think about the pain involved if you do nothing. For example, let's say I'm learning a new technology. Let's say it's... Um, Let's say it's a uh, guess. Let's take. Uh, how about biology? I don't know a lot about biology, so let's say I want to learn some new information in the field of biology, and the reason I want to learn that new information is because I want to be a specialist in that field, as an example. So, if I sit down and I just do nothing all day long regarding studying biology, I like to, I could think about the pain that it's going to cause because a year from now, when I should be a biology, you know, at least have a certain level of knowledge. I'll have nothing. I'll be where I am right now. How painful is that? And if it feels like I'm you know, taking the knife and twisting a little bit, yeah, do it to ourselves. Just realize that anything that we, if, if we have a goal and we sit and do nothing, that is going to result in pain and probably some self-induced suffering as a result. So one motivator, think about the pain involved if you don't do anything. Okay, on the positive side, <laughs> Uh, think about the positive results. For example, uh, think about the fact that, hey, I'm going to be a certified XYZ. I'll have these skills in load balancing. I'll have these skills in virtualization. I'll have these skills in Cisco or Juniper or whatever it is that Microsoft, whatever the topic is you're studying. And think how great it will be walking into an interview, not only having credentials of uh, being certified, but also being able to talk about group policy or access control list or context-based filtering or firewall services or whatever it is you have been studying and doing hands-on practice with, it will feel great and you will have those skills. And companies are willing to pay individuals who have the skill sets that are needed to manage and support and troubleshoot and maintain their networks. Okay, another option that we could do. So we took a look at three options, two options so far. One is Think about the pain of not doing anything. Secondly, think how great it will be if you do something. And then here's one that I do all the time. Don't think about it. Meaning, don't think about if you want to study or not. Don't think about, you know what, I, I, got, I got some email here. I got some Facebook. I got a Twitter message coming in. Um, the TV's over here. The Internet's on 24-7. You know, the Internet's never ending. Don't, and so maybe I, want to do, maybe I don't want to study. One of the op options is if you set up a time that you're going to study at 9.30 every morning for 10 minutes, do it. Don't think about it. Don't say well, how great it will be. Don't say how bad it will be if I don't. Just do it. And then once you start, like uh, Mary Poppins said, well begun is half done. 
Also another tip that's very, very helpful, at least it has been for me, and I, I am wanting your success as well. I'm hoping that some of these words will have an impact in your life to make a difference so that you can get to where you want to be. One of the techniques I use is that at the end of a study session, I will just kind of mentally review what I've learned, like, okay, I covered this and this and that. And then I will just make a note, like on a post-it note. I actually use a spiral notebook because it keeps all the pages in there and they don't fall out. I just make a note on what it is that I will be studying tomorrow. And that way I don't have to think about, okay, what am I going to study tomorrow? And in the interface, on the, at least on the browser, on the PC for CBT Nuggets, if you go to my training, it will take you right back to where you left off so you can pick up again. But by having, for example, maybe write down the title and the topic of what you're going to be studying tomorrow, then when it comes time for that study period, it's like, okay, I'm going to jump right into this in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you're done. Also, I've learned that it doesn't really take a full 10 minutes because if there's a 12 or 13 minute nugget, you may run it at 1.5 speed and be done before that. Or you may spend a 10 minute studying and think, oh my gosh, this is awesome. <laughs> I'm going to lab this up and practice it. You may take 15 to 20 minutes. So maybe, maybe you block out 30 minutes for studying. Maybe you take 10 minutes. But the secret is, it's a habit of taking that at least 10 minutes. And if you want to stop after 10 minutes, that's fantastic because you met your obligations. You can pick right up on the very next day. So those are some of the tips I wanted to talk with you and share with you about regarding studying and improving. If, you, if, if I, Keith Barker, without a college education and an extra average intelligence level can accomplish what I have been told are some pretty amazing things over a period of years, it's only through persistence. If our desire is strong enough, and if every day we're simply moving our feet in that direction, we can have great, great success. And I have seen that over and over again. I've got people that I know personally that have had no IT background whatsoever. They spent you know, like a year in preparing and studying. And one of those people, is now working for Amazon Web Services. He just moved to Seattle. Like a year ago, you didn't know IT. And now he's been studying, 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 and he's been doing lots of hands-on practice. And he passed the interviews for Amazon Web Services. They flew him up to Seattle, uh, somewhere in Washington. I believe it was Seattle. He did the interview there, said, Keith, they love me, and they're offering me a full-time job. Like, oh my gosh. Other stories where people are in retail or other businesses, and they start learning and improving their skills, and they get fairly entry-level jobs, and then they continue to study, and then they're promoted, either by the company they're with or by other companies because their skill sets continue to get better and better and better. If you need to reach me for whatever reason, I've got several preferred avenues. Um, the one I don't prefer is the front door. <laughs> but these social media avenues, uh, cbtnuggets.com, they have our blog there. Uh, YouTube channel, Twitter, Facebook, and so forth. I am always interested in furthering the success of our CBT Nuggets customers and family. And if you're not a CBT Nuggets customer, and for whatever reason, we have a seven-day free trial. So if you needed to learn something or study something, um, you might come and check us out. One of the tips that I learned, and this was back at Paramount Pictures as well, was that somebody there, I don't remember his name. He was a contractor who I really admired. We had lots of lunches together. I just can't remember his name. In any event, what he told me, he said, Keith, the secret is to invest in yourself. He said, he recommended that I invest 3% of my gross income, whatever it is, every year in myself. So I did the math. It, and you know, if you're making very, very little, it's still 3%. If you're making a lot, it's 3%. And what I did was I invested, and I would, I would go to conferences, and I was at uh, Paramount Pictures at that time did pay for me to go to a lot of stuff. And in addition to that, I would spend the 3% of my own money on my self-improvement. And I've done that consistently ever since I can remember. I'm always willing to invest in myself because every investment, there's a 1-5-10 rule. For every hour <laughs> that we spend investing in ourselves, whether it's exercise or studying or improving our relationships with someone or whatever it is, we are going to have like a five times return investment on that, on that initial investment of time or effort or money that we spent. For example, if we're trying to implement a network 
and we just try to figure it out by fuddling through it or installing a server or a load balancer or a firewall or whatever it is, it might take us five hours after fumbling through it to get it working, where if we spent one hour on training and learning how it operates, the fundamental components, how to configure it, and how to implement it, we would get that, that five hours for the implementation would be cut down probably down to an hour. And so we could actually get our jobs and work done a lot, lot faster by having that training. So the secret is invest in yourself. Make sure you have the resources that you need to do a good job. And then continue walking. Just never give up. Every step, every day. Um, it's also quite possible, I'll tell you this from my personal experience, it's also quite possible that people are not want to, some people are not going to cheer your success. Hey, why don't, <laughs> Why are you going back for your college degree? Or why are you going for this new certification? Or Because I, it's just human nature for some people to not appreciate that. I'd like to give you another example really quick of a dear friend, Anthony Sequera. Um, Anthony and I have been friends for uh, over two decades, maybe a little longer than that. Anthony is a freaking black belt in karate. He is a pilot, for Pete's sake, and a good one. And I was like, I think to myself, how does somebody I knew who wasn't a black belt or wasn't a pilot and all these other things he's done, how does he get there? And I realized the answer is just as I would get there if I had those goals. One step at a time, making goals that are long-term and then making sure every week and every day we're doing those things that would put us in that right direction. For some, it might be learning a foreign language. For others, it might be learning a new technical skill. And the secret is making conscious decisions to go in the right direction. And I'll tell you what, CBT Nuggets is a fabulous training platform. For those of you who have seen our content from the entire team, not just the instructors, but the customer support, the learning advisors, the sales, the marketing, the accounting, everything else, our main purpose is you, the learner. Our goal is to change people's lives one nugget at a time. And we ask for the invitation to make that catalyst, that difference in your life by having you join us for simply 10 minutes a day. So I would like to go ahead and open it up for questions. Let me see if I have any questions that have been flagged over. And I'm going to bring um, my good friend Anthony Takotley back online just to confirm whether or not we have any questions that um, we need to answer on mic. Yeah, it looks like we just got one that came through. Okay, great. Let me start with that one. If there's others, pop them, pop them over. The question is, um, so I guess 48 years old is not too old to start in the IT industry. And the answer is absolutely correct. 48 is not too old. I, have, I know people that are old, significantly older than that that are in the IT industry that they started when they were in their um, over 50 years. So never give up. Everything can be learned, and there is some wisdom that a person with life experience can bring to the table as they start learning the IT skills and start becoming part of the team. So it is never too late. And check this out. Let's say that I wanted personally to become uh, the President of the United States. I, that's not one of my goals. But let's say it was. Right now, I'm 51 years old. If I started I don't, I, if I started taking the steps towards that, I don't even know what they would be, like maybe going to law school, and, then, and, and I started working, and I tried to go for a local election, and try to become a governor, or a senator, or a representative, and, and let's say I died, or I became too old, I could never reach that goal. Guess what? In the process of achieving and working towards that goal, I can have a whole bunch of joy, because they, the happiness is in the journey of going somewhere that's worthwhile. When you get there, <laughs> guess what? we need to set another journey for another destination. So it's never too late and it's very engaging and you're going to keep young. A person is going to keep young um, mentally, they're going to be alert if they continue on in their journey towards those things that are important to them. So thanks for that question. Okay, another question. How does a person keep up with the ever-increasing rate of change? And the answer is 10 stinking minutes a day. That's how we keep current. That's how I do it. I, and sometimes I spend a lot more than 10 minutes. But the secret is to consistently take new technologies that are important and start tackling them 10 minutes a day. And if somebody does that, you're, you're on top of the world. In fact, you'll be in the top 5 or 10% of your field in just a matter of years, and you can stay there 
by just taking consistent time to study and uh, continue your skills in the right areas. Make sure you're climbing the right ladder. For example, I wouldn't recommend anybody right now, uh, no offense to Novell Netware, but I wouldn't recommend anybody right now starting a full career on being a Novell Netware specialist. Because in the, in the 90s, they were the cat's meow, and uh, that's no longer the case. All right, so again, no offense to Novell, don't send the hate mail. One last question, and that's this. I need to know how to memorize commands and facts and figures and networking in a better way. Thanks in advance. Okay, great. For memorization, one of the, the, more feed, the more senses that we have to learn and work with a topic, the better we'll be. So for example, if we're watching a nugget, we're watching a video, that's visual input. If we're listening to the instructor as he's talking about that command he's doing, that's audio input. If we're taking notes, for example, we click on the pause button and we write down the command and what it does, that's another input, that's sensory you know, touch and feel. We could also do hands-on practice to reinforce that commit. So instead of just watching it, listening to it, writing notes down, we could also go ahead and configure it. And one of the secrets is, is that as you want to work with commands and work with the platform, if the more you practice with it, the more second nature it will be to you by doing the practice. So maybe as part of your studies, you do 10 minutes of videos or watching nuggets, and then you say, I'm also going to spend another 10 or 15 minutes doing hands-on practice, or at least taking notes to help remember those commands. Those will help a bunch. And then the last question, and then we got to close, is how do you re regain motivation or momentum after you've lost it? And that is fantastic. What a great question. Um, in, my, in my life, I've never had a failure, never a closed door, never a bad experience. <laughs> and, and here's, I'm just joking. I'm kidding. The reality is for every great thing that's ever really happened to me, I probably had 10 or 15 things that were just total garbage and BS. So how do you, how do you overcome a failure or a short-term loss? And the answer is, Realize it is a short-term loss. If, I've got, if you and I have our goal for 10 years, and that's broken into five-year goals, and we know where we're going, and I know that I'm an authentic, loving, creative person, and that I want to change the world you know, one person at a time, if I have that in my heart, and I know that, and I've got my written goals, if I come across somebody who you know, isn't happy for my success, or if I come across somebody who doesn't agree with me, you know what? I just move on. Uh, one day at a time, one step at a time, and I, I've failed exams before. In fact, I have failed a CCIE practical lab. I did. I, per I passed my first one in 2001, first time. It's like, yay, I'm a CCIE. And then in 2003, I went back to my CCA security, and I had my lunch handed to me. I was like, you, I, I, I totally failed it. And I was so embarrassed and so disgruntled. I was like, oh, I'm so upset. And you know what the answer to that was? I wasn't ready. I wasn't well prepared for the security CCIE. And the reality was, can somebody pass this exam? Yes. Could I pass it? Yes, if I take the right steps. So I went back to a better study schedule for studying step by step. And just realize that minor setbacks are expected. They are not a brick wall. You can climb over a brick wall. You can knock down the brick wall. You can walk around the brick wall. You can, uh, you can dissipate the brick wall with your mind <laughs> because logically brick walls are simply that. As long as you have the ability to uh, consciously study and read and improve and move your feet uh, logically, not even physically, people without their ability to move their bottom extra, uh, you know, legs, uh, and this is a logical metaphor, not a physical one, you can overcome any obstacle that comes up. And the secret is to keep on going no matter what. All right, I went a few moments over. I am so grateful though for everybody sharing uh, the 32 minutes or so that we had together in this webinar. And I'd like to turn it back over to Anthony Ticotley for just a, closing, a couple closing reminders. And then uh, again, once again, everybody, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate you and we wish you the best of success in wherever your lives take you. And we uh, are hoping for that success. Thanks. Awesome job, Keith. Thanks again, everybody, for joining us. We hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Goodbye.